Hello, I'm Stargate Pioneer from the GuineaGeek.com network. And for those that don't know me, I have, as of this recording, over 450 produced podcasts. I'm also co-host of Better Podcasting, a podcast for the hobby podcaster. And after the latest episode of Better Podcasting, I made a mistake that might have cost us the best quality audio recording for that episode. So let's just take a listen to hear what happened pretty much live. You well, need my job. track, though, right? Yeah, I just send it whenever. Uh, I have to still find time to add a GG. So. Oh, I think I just jerked the card out without pressing stop. Uh, well, let me know. If I have to take the other one again, it's fine. Um, I'm loading up nothing. That's okay. I, I'll use mine. It's all good. That's why we do this, right? That's why, we, that's why we use multiple. All good. I do have a Skype backup track sure send it to me that might be better um if not i'll use mine no wor no worries i can't believe i did that hey we got enough backup recordings we're good we're good all right so what i use in recording my podcast is a zoom h6 and it's actually recording this right now but i have a surrogate for the zoom h6 in the zoom h5 and how the zoom h5 actually records the audio is it saves it on this SD card, which in this case is a 32 gigabyte card. So I will put this in and it is loading up in the machine. As it loads up, let me talk to you about backups. As you heard on the clip, we actually have a bunch of backups to our recordings on Better Podcasting. I record Steven's end, Steven's records my end. I have a Skype backup recording in Iver. We stream to Spreaker, we stream to Facebook Live, and we stream to YouTube Live. So there's plenty of backup recordings. We weren't going to actually lose the podcast, but since the highest quality audio is recorded through the Zoom H6, that is what might have been lost. So what I did is I had it recording and on the Zoom H6, and instead of pressing the stop button or the record button, record button or stop button, and when I was in such a hurry to get out of there, I just popped the card open and it didn't have a chance to save. Rats. Now this is bad for the SD card and it could screw up any other files that you have on there. And it's definitely bad for the file that you were just recording. So it might not actually be recoverable, but I did find a way that is possible to recover your audio in some cases. So let's take a look at what I found out. I have already loaded up the errant files. You can see there's 650 megabit files. This is my track, this is Steven's track, so I know there's data there, but let's load it up in Audacity and let's see what actually pops out. And unfortunately, the longer you have this file process, it's not going to change. There is absolutely nothing there, at least that Audacity can read. So I did find out that if you go into File, Import, Raw Data, and bring up the file, you bring up this option box. Now, I had no idea what to put in the option box to begin with, so I just pressed Import. And that, unfortunately, led to a file that looks pretty, but doesn't contain any usable information at all. Let's just take a listen to a few spots in it. Pretty staticky. Yep, more static. Yeah, the longer you listen, that static's not going to go away. So, what I found out is if you bring up this other program called VLC Media Player, which I actually use to preview our videos before they're published, and if you open up the file, the audio file, and you right click that audio file, you bring up information, you can take a look at the codec information. Now, normally what has been offered is that you should bring up a file that has successfully been saved and you can look at the information. In this particular case, I was able to actually look at the file that I was trying to import and look at the data there. So it's an audio file. It's PCM S24 codec, it's mono, and the sample rate is 44,100 hertz. So remember that, S24 PCM, mono, 44,100. Let's go back and try to bring up the file again. All right, that didn't work again. 
So let's import the raw data. Let's bring up that file again. Let's change the sign to 24 bit PCM in the encoding. In the channels, let's go to mono and the sample rate is good at 44,100. Now there are two options that I really just didn't know what to put in there. And this first is the byte order. And I've seen two different options to choose. Uh, on the Zoom forums, I saw a little Indian, which is what I chose, but I also saw in some YouTube videos the default just because it was the default. So if anybody knows exactly what these are, go ahead and throw it in the comments. But I chose little Indian and it actually worked in the end. So because you don't know how the start offset will work, let's just choose 1% of the file to try to import instead of the whole thing. It'll just save time. So I will start offset with 100. That's the first one that I saw to use. So I imported it and it kind of looks better, but let's take a quick listen. Nope. Nope, that's not usable audio. So what to use in that last spot? Bring it up again, put in the options again that we saw on VLC media player, the signed 24 bit PCM. Let's keep it at little Indian. Let's change that to mono and the start offset. The best I can tell you is try every number starting from zero. So use the amount to import at 1% and start at zero, then go to one, then go to two, then go to three and so on and so forth. So just like this zero, and then import one and then import two and then import. In this particular case, I had three failures. I failed at 100, I failed at zero, and I failed at one. But then I chose two and it actually worked. And that is different for every file. I haven't seen a standardized information for that. And voila, we have a great file. Let's take a listen to a couple of sections. Foam on it, so it's all just vanity. Yeah, that's pretty good. Specific time period, that's pretty good. Actual audio racks go, so that's pretty good. So we have a good file. And what you have to do with this though, is you have to save it. So I'm gonna export the audio as a WAV file. I'm gonna call it fixed. And then I'm gonna send this off to Steven, which actually I already have, and he is using it to produce the episode of Better Podcasting that we were on. And that takes a little bit to encode and save. All right, it's saved. So let's take a look. It's 430 megabytes. So as you saw in the options on Audacity, I didn't have the same encoding options. I had a PCM 16-bit, and that leads to a little lower quality, but it's still the best quality audio that we were able to get. So. It is good, I can save that, I can save the other file if I needed to, and that is how you do it. So, hopefully this will work for you. Let me reiterate, it does not work in all cases. It depends on how much of the file that you actually have left and uh, how Audacity can actually read that data. Hopefully this does work for you. Once again, my name is Stargate Pioneer. I'm from the guineageek.com network. You can contact me at Stargate Pioneer at GunnaGeek.com or go to BetterPodcasting.com to find all sorts of neat tips and tricks on how to make your podcast sound better. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you guys later. Bye.